Hi, in this big data and Hadoop tutorial series presented by COSO IT, this video is focused on HDFS. In this topic, we will be covering what is HDFS, HDFS architecture, the nodes present in HDFS, and the functions of name node, data node, and the secondary name node. Then we will be seeing some useful commands in HDFS. And finally, we'll be doing one hands-on on creating file and directory and storing it in HDFS. So HDFS is one of the core components of Apache Hadoop ecosystem and the other being MapReduce. So Hadoop is ideal for storing large amounts of data like terabytes and petabytes and uses HDFS as a storage system. So HDFS lets you connect uh, nodes, that is the commodity hardware contained within clusters over which data files are distributed. Thus it is a type of file system that is distributed across nodes and that's why the name is Hadoop Distributed File System. HDFS is fault tolerant and stores the data very reliably. So logically, when a file is stored on HDFS, the file is split into blocks. So we can say that HDFS is a block structured file system. These blocks are then stored across the cluster of machines in the data nodes. If we see the HDFS high level block diagram, we can see two main components of HDFS. One is name node and the other one is the data node. So name node is a Java process that is that stores metadata only while data nodes are the nodes that stores the actual data in the cluster. So it is installed on every commodity box, stores and retrieves data blocks, regularly updates the name node about its blocks and storage space. So since HDFS is a block structured file system, blocks are stored across the cluster of machines in data nodes and it stored as a size of 64 megabytes or in multiple of it. HDFS uses data replication as a strategy to provide fault tolerance feature and by default it replicates at three places. And the application using the HDFS can also configure the replication factor. So HDFS block. So it is the physical division of data file done by HDFS while storing it. So by default, Hadoop 2 has 128 megabytes of block size. Now let us see how blocks in a file are distributed. Supposing there are three blocks in a file, say A, B and C. Now HDFS stores blocks on the cluster in a rack aware fashion. That is one block on one rack and the other two blocks on the other rack. So if A is on rack one and other two will be on other racks. So it usually places one replica on a node in the local rack, another one on a node on a completely different remote rack and the third one a different node on the remote rack. Now let us see HDFS node structure. Let us suppose a client wants to read a file from HDFS. So first step the client will open the file then distributed file system calls the name node using RPC to determine the location of the blocks. For each block, the name node returns the address of all the data nodes that have a copy of that block. So client will now interact with respective data nodes to read the file. Now prior to Hadoop 2, the name node was a single point of failure and secondary name node periodically used to read the file system change logs and updated it. But now in Hadoop 2, HDFS high availability feature provides support for multiple name nodes. So in a typical high availability cluster, two separate machines are configured as name nodes. At any point of time exactly one of the name nodes is in active state 
and the other is in standby state. So in order for the standby node to keep its state synchronized with the active node, active node derivably logs a record of modification to an added log file stored in the share directory. So some of the functions of name node. Name node maintains file system namespace or we can say the inode details in memory checkpoints to local storage. It also maintains edit log reflecting all the changes done to the namespace. Name node keeps a record of file blocks and the nodes the blocks are stored on, maps a file name to data blocks and also block to the data nodes. Most importantly, it records metadata of all the files stored in the cluster. For example, their location, the size of the files, permissions, hierarchy, etc. It also ensures adherence to replication factor of all the blocks. And it also records every change to file system metadata in a transaction log called edit log. For example, if a file is deleted in HDFS, the name node will immediately record this in edit log. Time to time it receives a heartbeat and block report from the data nodes and it makes sure that the data nodes are working properly. And block report, you can think of it as a list of all blocks on a data node. And supposing a data node fails, the name node chooses new data node for the new replicas and balances the disk usage and also manages the communication traffic to these data nodes. Let us see some of the functions of data nodes. Data node actually stores the data in the blocks and it retrieves blocks when requested by clients or the name node. It functions in a way that it periodically reports back to the name node all the list of the blocks it has stored. That is called the block report. And during normal operations it sends regular heartbeat to name node ensuring that it's still working properly. Now let us see some of the functions of secondary name node. It contains a namespace image and edit logs like name node. It copies the namespace image from name node and merges with edit log. It also copies the updated namespace back to name node. And this process, it keeps on repeating every one hour by default, which can be configured by you. Now in the event of name node failure, it can restart another machine with the namespace image and edit log from secondary name node. Now let us see some of the HDFS commands. For creating a directory in HDFS, we need to say Hadoop FS. All the commands of HDFS starts from Hadoop FS. So this is dash mkdir command used with Hadoop FS which helps you create a directory on HDFS. Now if you want to display the list of the files and directories in HDFS file path, you simply say Hadoop FS ls command and give the directory path. If you want to copy the file from local file system to HDFS, you say Hadoop FS, copy from local and the original path into the final destination path. For copying files from HDFS back to the local file system, you need to use get command. So Hadoop FS dash get and then you give specify the directory name and the path of the local file system. The command which gets you configuration information from the configuration directory is hdfs get conf dash conf key and then you give the name of that key fs.default.name. Now let us see a simple hands on how to create a directory in hdfs and put the files from local file system to hdfs. Let us start a cloud era and open a path terminal. First, let us create a directory in our HDFS. Hadoop fs mkdir command we'll be using to create the directory. Let us name our directory as COSOIT.
We can also check whether our directory has got created or not using Hadoop FS ls command. Yes, here we can see our directory COSO IT has been created in HDFS. Now let us create one file in local file system using cat command. Our file name is example. Let's type in the text hello big data. We can check whether our file is got created in local file system or not using ls command. So that is the difference between the HDFS command and the local file system commands. Here you write a Hadoop FS for the HDFS commands and for local file system commands you don't write a Hadoop FS. So ls command lists all the files present in your local file system. Here we can see that example has got created here. Yeah, so example file has got created in our local file system. Now we are going to put this file from local file system to HDFS in the directory COSO IT. So for that we will be using command Hadoop FS put name of the file is example and we are going to put in the directory COSO IT. Let us check whether a file has got copied from local file system to HDFS or not using Hadoop FS ls COSO IT. So in this directory we will see that a file example has got copied. Yes, here it is. So Hadoop FS put command is used to put the files from local file system to HDFS. We can also check this in our Hue file browser. Let's go to Hue file browser and click on this file browser. Here we see that by default all our directory files are get created under slash user slash cloud era. Here we can see the COSO IT directory has got created. We have created this directory under this we have put the file from local file system to HDFS. Here we can also check the contents of the file, hello big data. We can also perform other operations on this directory. We can rename it, move it, copy it. We can also change the permissions of this and also we can delete it permanently. So, if we say delete forever, this will be deleted from our directory. We can also de delete this from our cloud error prompt using Hadoop FS minus RM minus R and the directory name. This will permanently remove the directory COSO IT from HDFS. Yes, it has got deleted. We can check from Hadoop FS ls command that whether COSO IT directory is present in HDFS or not. Here we can see that directory has got deleted. So these are some of the basic HDFS commands. We created a directory and we also move the uh, file from local file system to HDFS. We can also remove the files and perform different uh, operations on that file too. Thanks a lot for watching our HDFS tutorial. For more tutorials, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can also register for in-depth big data training with a real-time cluster on www.cosoit.com.